Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, just a second. Uh, hold on. I'm coming. Okay. All right. about this just a minute I know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm coming, dear. There we go. Well, if I am, I don't see it. Okay. Hello, everybody. What? I've been over there playing with my, uh, streaming app well get out of dodge all right i'll tell you what uh stop stop and i'll start this one this is what happens when you multi-streamed hey hey frank hold on enlightened yeah okay buddy okay this is gonna be uh Hello, everybody. Whoops. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. Getting started. Enlightened. Amy. Herman. Uh, this is going to be about the bees. Let me see. Don't look at my Christmas tree. I'll have B-Man, the expert, take care of it after this. He is the expert decorator, not me. Hardest James, cool and hello. Thank you. Thumbs up. Okay, we're going to talk about the bees in the hive, okay? And thumbs are up while you're, the, while you're on it. Uh, she's on a different tab here. Camera's rolling. I am? Okay, Amy. What about the birds? Enlightened? <laughs> We're talking about the bees today. We'll get into the birds next week. Okay. Hi, Joseph. So many people have asked us, I guess I am on a different tab, have asked us and sent messages, emails. Folks, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, We're doing the best we can. We literally have 8,000 emails. That tells you where we are, okay? 
Uh, it is interesting. I think it's interesting, Hardens, because learning about beekeeping, bees are fascinating animals. We are live from the hot. You got that. <laughs> Don't birds eat bees? That's a good question. Bee man, you, you feel that one. I have no idea. I do know I had a hot dog dog named Sally, and she ate bees. So I don't know. Okay. So we're going to talk about, yeah, hit the thumbs up. Thank you. So we're going to talk, where is Amy? Oh, she's up there. Oh, we're going to talk about, hi, KC Detox. We're going to talk about, you know, I always say the bees form a ball in the hive. And we always say, you know, we're saving sugar for the hives. And we're saving um, frames of honey. And we're putting sugar on top. And I know everybody's thinking, well, what are they doing in there? Okay, so I have some interesting information to give you. Poor dog must have had. No, he didn't. He loved those. Oh, she was a she. She loved those bees. Okay. A winter cluster. Now, you all know what a cluster is. A cluster is a group of bees. Think of a swarm. We've shown you what a swarm is like. It's a group of bees. Okay. You know, they get together and it's a big old swarm. Hi, Tracy's World. Good to see you. Okay. This is fascinating. I think it's fascinating. And I'll tell you all, before... Being a beekeeper, I was scared to death of bees. So, you know, the Lord did tell me to be a beekeeper. He did. And I told my husband, and he said, make sure you got that message right. <laughs> okay. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pray on it for a while. And it didn't change. So, uh, we got the bees. And I found out that I wasn't. Um, so... Hold on, I, I gotta share myself out here. But anyway, the challenge for us in the north is to um, get them through the winter. Typically, uh, half of the bees up here die. That, that's the way it is, folks. I believe it is 50%, okay? Um, and we are trying, you know, I don't think we half of ours died last year, okay? We took a hit um, on all kinds of stuff this year. I can't even tell you what we took a hit on. Um, so anyway, um, you've got your you've got your big group, right? Hold on there. I got to share this out. There we go. You know that's going to be my post. I don't know why YouTube does that. Okay, so. Um, Anyway, um, hold on. Yeah, that, that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. So, the inside of a hive. Nobody's heating the inside of a hive. The inside. You, do you know what a beehive looks like? Okay. It's, uh, well, they do die. Why do bees die? They freeze to death up here to Tracy's world. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they die during the year. The average life of a, a worker bee, I believe, is 40-some-odd days, okay? But but there, it's freezing out. You know, it's like 30 now. I mean, you're sorry to hear about that. So are we. You know, they're in a hive box. You know, we were showing you this last week. Um, they're in a hive box. We've done all we can do. You know, we've got frames in there of honey that we've saved during the year we've got frame frame tons of frames of their honey that we've saved i mean we have honey too but we have frames of their honey we have frames 5g we don't have any 5g out here in light we don't have anything out here we don't there are no hold on enlighten down there where the bees are there are no wires that's why there's no electricity there's no water. There's no underground anything. There's nothing down there. Not even solar. There's just land and field mice and coyote and fox and raccoons and skunks. And in fact, last year, no, it's okay, Tracy's World. Ask all the questions you want because we ask questions. Nobody knows everything about bees. We don't know anything about everything about bees. No beekeeper knows that. Everybody keeps asking questions. Well, what did you do? What did you do? Because nobody knows, okay? Um, last year, some animal got our beehive, tipped 
went right through the plywood and everything we had braced up, knocked it over. All we had left was some hair on there, and the tracks were melted. But I never asked about them. Yeah, do they steal the honey? Well, I'll tell you what, they they knocked down the wrong hive last year. They um. Well, yeah, well, yeah, maybe across the world, world, maybe across the country, they are. Um, but um, they hit the wrong hive, uh, hardens, because that hive was big. You know, that's what we've been doing is merging our hives. If if you put a little bitty hive in for the winter, you've got a hive this big, okay? To and you'll hear about that to go around and survive. You can't have that. Now this right here is something, this is a pin, a pin thing I use for sewing. You want one twice as big. You got you want a big uh a big big uh you know a big uh swarm. Whatever you call it. What are these things? Cluster. You don't want a little cluster because you want them to stay hot and hot. No, we don't got we don't have them because killer bees can't take winter. That's one thing that's good about being in the north. I get to that in a minute. Killer bees only come up to maybe North or South Carolina. They can't take the cold weather. Nothing can take the cold weather. Um, get to that in a minute. Um, so we merge our hives. You know, you want bigger, bigger, the bigger the hives, the better to get through the winter. So this hive was huge. I mean, it was stacked up high. It was huge. And they knocked it over because they could probably sell, uh, smell the honey. And they, they got in there. But the bees attacked it and took them out. I mean, they probably just made it away because they left all the honey and all the bees were dead. We have pictures of that somewhere. We showed pictures of that. Maybe we'll show pictures of that next week. Um, yeah, I don't think it was a bear uh giant white boxes yeah we we have the the bees did stop them heart harns yes sure did across the country 5g is supposed to be killing everything but i'll tell you this when i spoke 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 spot spoke to the the woman at our cable company she told me 5g is not the highest thing out there it's like on a scale of one to like two or three hundred it's not the the most the strongest I could have gone up I could have gone up a, a long way up she says well you can get as high as you want but I don't think you'll need it I said okay I can go back and say well I want 10g now don't give it to me I mean people go oh, okay 5g she said well you can if you want to pay for it we'll give it to you call your cable company and ask them now maybe they're not as open as the down folk down home folks up here but that's what she told me. Are they more aggressive, though? Or is there junior? Uh, African bees, they'll kill you. <laughs> they're more aggressive. They'll kill you. They'll, they will kill you. They kill people. Mm. African bees were created on an island. I forgot where. I read the story because they were created by some man. Maybe Bee Man remembers. Uh, on some island. It was a project. Because they uh, make a whole bunch of honey fast. Whole bunch of honey fast. And uh, he left them there. <laughs> like, he left them. And they migrated to uh, Mexico first. Yeah, Mexico. And then from Mexico, of course, they couldn't get from Mexico up here on their own. Uh, so they were brought here. You know they, how the trade goes across Mexico and the U.S. So they were brought here, and then they just went up like Florida. They're in Florida, and the thing about it is, down there they say you can recognize if you have killer bees in your bee yard. Bee yard is just what it sounds like. An apiary is a, t a big fancy word for a bee yard. It's just where you keep your bees. Hey, kicking it, kicking with Ben. Good to see you. Yeah, they put on a suit and roasted killer bees. They found them, they followed them two miles. Well, that's nice, but I'll tell you what, if that suit comes off, they're going to get killed. Yeah, they uh, Africanized bees are more, more aggressive 
Yeah, they come attack you in large groups and you will die. I don't think you will live. In fact, those are the ones where I read in the news, I believe, B-Man, where uh, the border guards watched the, the little kids and them. They attacked them in the car. Anybody see that on the news? Yeah, I think Harden saw that. They didn't do anything. They didn't go save that family. It is, oh, well. Those things are treacherous. 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 I mean, maybe if they had had some bear mace or something, but uh, it is crazy. So he left them there and they migrated, you know. But anyway, you can tell because they're more aggressive. Now, theory is if you have a hive and say, you know, if we have a hive, like all of our hives have a different temperament. Some are very calm. You know, when we're down there, you know, B-Man will say, well, you want to watch out for this hive because they're kind of aggressive. Why don't you go take care of that hive because they're calm? And I'll say, no, I want to do this one. We had one down there. Oh, my goodness. If we had live streamed it, I don't know. The bees, oh, my goodness. Oh, my. They were just pouring out and pour. Smoke didn't stop them. Nothing stopped them. They just kept pouring out. It was like. An attack. <laughs> Remember that one, B Man? They were pouring out the top like, who is that up there? They just kept coming out, coming. And we had two smokers that day. And they were coming out and pouring and pouring. Oh my goodness. It, it, it was terrible. Um, oh, the Africanized bees. Yes. Hi, AQ2. So, anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about these bees here. And B Man, you can handle those. Uh, the bees, yes. No hardens, James. Bees, those Africanized bees, they'll take you out. Yes, they will. Thank you, AQT. AQT, she makes quotes. She sure does. You may want to go over there. Uh, that's, no, you didn't get me distracted. That's how I think. Pew! Tell him enlightened and light. And I was telling B Man about your channel. Wasn't I B Man? <laughs> I said, Lighten, I love that channel. <laughs> I said, <laughs> Don't tell him what I said, B Man. <laughs> okay, anyway. In that cluster, all right, when the temperature gets below 10 to 14. Celsius. I don't know why they even print things Celsius in the USA, which is 50 to 55, 50 to 57 Fahrenheit. Honeybees are one of but a few kinds of insects that survive the winter as a colony. As the outside air temperature decreases, the winter cluster becomes tighter and tighter. Think of people, cats, any kind of animal. If you're huddled somewhere as it gets colder you gotta you you gotta get closer and closer okay so they they get closer by regulating their temperature so how close they get and how they act in that hive is dependent upon the temperature there are three important things to the bees the air temperature outside and in the hive their body temperatures and the cluster temperature, which is inside that cluster. Because remember, what's inside that, that cluster? The queen. She stays inside. She never goes outside that cluster except to go to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom is called a um, cleansing flight. And you need the temperature to go up to around 55. Okay? Uh, African honeys will kill others. Not up here they won't because they can't live up here, Joseph. They can't make it up this far. They can, if, if somebody wants to bring those bees up here, we'll just sit it out until like now. They'll die. <laughs> they can't, they're not made to survive in the winter. They, they can't do it. They, they can't do it. They, they, they're, they can't do it. So we'll just sit here like, I mean, it, it won't happen. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, you know, there that that's way off that topic. That's something else. You know, I've been on live streams and, and some uh, and, and actually TV shows where they say, well, you know, in the South, those germs don't die down there. That's why they have illnesses and things that we don't have up here in the North, because all those germs in the summer die. I mean, in the winter die. It all dies out. 
Yeah, we get colds and flus and things, but for the most part, that stuff dies out. Nothing dies in the South. It just keeps rolling. <laughs> All those things just keep going. And something else that I noticed in Florida, down there and, you know, visiting our daughter and stuff, like, anybody been down there and noticed the size of butterflies? Those things are huge down there. I mean, super huge. I don't know. Things like, like our daughter was telling us when she first moved there, like uh, cockroaches are off the charts. Huge. Big time. Yeah, I live in... Yeah, big, right? Hey, God loves me. Welcome. Yeah, stuff down there are, are cockroaches and um, bee ladies. Huge, God loves me and Callie. Those bugs are huge in the south. See, we don't. they're not huge up here because they have a very short 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 lifespan they have to get out of the cocoon do their thing and then they die in the winter i mean that's it folks they can't just keep going on yes yes and 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 they have these little lizards going all around yeah that's it that's right God loves me. And you know, I've got those lizards, those little blue things. I mean, I'm trying to sit on sit on her uh uh those on in her on her deck in the back. I mean it's beautiful. You know, she has all these trees and things. But who wants to sit out there and have those lizards? You're sharing a, 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 a lawn chair with lizards going up and down. They don't bat an eyelash. Now our son, who's in North Carolina, he don't like those lizards. He does not like in fact he got a lizard trap. He did. We were down there last July. Something came in the mail. I said, oh, you got good, good. What you get? What you get? He said, I got a lizard trap. I s he doesn't like frogs. I mean, he's in the South. He doesn't want. <laughs> he said, oh, God, what did he say? Oh, he said something. I forgot the term he said. Africa always back on the bees. Uh, yeah, well, big lizards in California, but they're like the Wild West. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'm not going to tell you that. I'll tell you what. When we were, <laughs> we were at our modest, I mean, modest old broken down mobile home in uh, Florida. And then I got to get back to these. Florida, I, I told my husband, I said, you better get an exterminator in here. Oh, thank you, God loves me. I told him, I don't want nothing to lie within 100 feet of this thing all the way around. Nothing. I meant that. And, I, and then I told B-Man, or I was leaving. I'll tell you that right now. It is the Wild West. I don't do that stuff. Everything is so huge. You know, you could have... Uh, yeah, I got, I got a wild personality uh, press to play. You know why? Because I raised three kids. We raised three kids. You wait, God loves me. You wait till your son is older. You're gonna be, <laughs> you may not be just like me, but you're going to be. Phew, I'm telling you, it takes, it takes a toll. Who in here has kids that are raised? It takes Depending on what they were like. Maybe not. But you know, I'll tell you. Woo, we had some humdingers. I mean, they're all extraordinarily successful now. And they all went south. You know, when people will ask me, wow, you go down to visit them? We go, goo, 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 goo. <laughs> oh, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, Tracy. You got grown kids. How you doing, Tracy? <laughs> I mean, our kids are watching. We love you. Oh, we really love you. We love the grandkids, but... Mm -mm. You know, there's FaceTime, FaceTime, you know, when you're done, click. I mean, really, we love our children. But, you know, they have their lives. We, 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 every dime we literally had, every dime we had, mine is grown. Yes, Tracy, every dime we had went into our kids. We sacrificed. Well, you know what? In light net welfare cheese was some good stuff. I had cousins on welfare. That was some good stuff. They don't even sell that anymore. Came in a block. And boy, that made the best cheese. You can't have grilled cheese like that welfare cheese. I tell you that right now. And I wish they would bring back welfare um, blue jeans. Oh, my God. 
They don't make jeans like welfare blue jeans. Do they still have that stuff? Wiped out the three hives. What B would have wiped out three hives? Who wiped out three hives? They don't make some things even social services has cut down on. I will, I will tell you one thing about social services. When I was a young girl, and I'll put this story out there because everybody knows it. When I was a young girl, we were poor. As my, one of my favorite pastors said, we were so poor we couldn't pay attention. That was okay. You know, we, we were the ones. Yes, it was, Tracy! You get that cheese made great grilled cheese sandwiches. Sure did. We had the plastic bags on the shoes and put it in the boot. Boots came when all the bills were paid. And when you were in a family with eight, that was, you know, you went round the kids you know but that's okay I learned a lot I learned you get money you know you got you know you can ask it could be man cringes cuz you know money, eh. but yeah um I I tell you I I yes good grilled cheese you get good you got that right Tracy where was I going with that story but anyway uh yeah hi TJ Smith good to see you How's it going? DJ, I love you, man. B-Man, Joseph Biles. Hives can be wiped out while ours, oh yeah. Hard times. Well, I'll tell you what, we had beyond hard times. We had the rag man, which means after we stopped handing down clothes, then my mother had one of those big tins, and we took all the buttons off, kept all the buttons, and then took all the rags down to the rag man. Anybody ever hear the rag man? I bet not. Took the rags down to the rag man. Got money from those. And daddy would put us on. He knew guys that had a farm. And daddy would put us on the flatbed. Flat part of the truck. And um, take us out to the apple orchards. And the peach orchards. Orchards. And the pear orchards. And we pick all that fruit and come home and peel and wash canning jars and uh, can and can and can and can and can. I'm not going to get into B-Man, but he didn't grow up like that. <laughs> not at all. No. No, 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 no. Totally different background. <laughs> what? Yeah, but anyway, not at all. Totally different aside from just race, I'll tell you folks. Nice memories. <laughs> it's your, well, you know, when you don't know, you're poor. Because we lived around poor. We didn't know any. Di I mean, we were all, all poor. I mean, you know. Yes, Tracy. And you know what's good about those? One pot meals. In fact, I made some soup last week. One of those, if you're in the kitchen and you're not spoiled, you're in the soup. <laughs> those were the best kinds of soups, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, it makes you humble. It makes you humble. So when you get older in life, but see, we spoiled our kids. You know, yeah, it was it was fun for us to play. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. You know, I notice these days people take their kids to orchards to pick apples and things. But, you know, it, you know it would have been hard for us if we had, you know, we didn't have stuff like color TV and cell phones and microwaves. They weren't invented yet, you know, but... And that Joseph both we were sent to our grandparents' homes in the summer to get us away from the, the, the where we lived, the streets. Why? I don't know. What good that did, you know, because the summer we were all out of school. And, um, you know, my parents decided rather than let us be out there with all of our friends at night, and in the day, because my mother, you know, you're trying to keep up with eight kids. Um, she would, um, hey, Tammy. Uh, well, I'm putting this up. You see this, folks? See what, putting this up for my glasses. Uh, yeah. Ice and bladder, whatever. Yeah, she sent us to our grandparents. And she'd pack us up. No luggage, folks. Cardboard boxes. Put the clothes in there. Uh, really? And then pack up a box of, uh, food, and we go down to my grandparents, and then I gotta get back to this. 
Um, and uh, my grandparents, oh my God. One thing my grandparents had, two things my grandmother had that I, I always kept to. A rain barrel. I have a rain barrel. I told B-Man, I want a rain barrel. Now, they don't have the wooden ones anymore. I have a, I don't even know what it's made out of, but it's a rain barrel. And I have, I have a rain barrel. That's the only thing so far. But something else I really want is a hand pump in the kitchen sink. Because my grandma had a hand pump. What's a rain barrel? Oh, boy. Somebody in the chat tell that man what a rain barrel is. A rain barrel. What, what could, oh yeah, talk to bee man. Were you so poor the bees refused to sting us? <laughs> Your pity. <laughs> oh, enlightened. Oh, Lord. What's a rain barrel? A rain barrel, well, in my granny's time, because there was no such thing as plumbing. So, she had two rain barrels on either side of the house that were, uh, they were wooden and, and they weren't, they were rain barrels. People had them back then, and the rain came in. Of course, back then the rain was pure. You didn't. I'll just say the rain was pure, and the rain came, and it was very, very soft. And so my my grandmother used that, and then she would suction off like a little part of a room and put up a curtain, and then pour it in this steel tub, like heat it up on her wood stove, and then pour the buckets in the steel tub and we had to go behind the curtain and take our baths there with her soap. And uh, we also used the rain barrel for doing dishes. We had to bring in, um, she always had water he heated on two of her burners on her wood stove so we had to bring in wood. And she had an outhouse and she had a chamber pot for through the night. Uh. Is this making sense to anybody? And she had, uh, oh, just listen, AQT. This is back to the old days. Um, I mean, yeah, this was, you know, and she had, like, the outside, the steps outside. I mean, there was no cement. You go out the door, it was all dirt. And she says, go sweep the yard. I'm thinking, what am I sweeping? It was dirt. But you had to sweep it. You know, stuff like that. Um... So anyway, going on with the bees. I mean, but they had huge garden and um, cows and chickens and pigs. And they ate out the garden. That was it. And kerosene lights, no electricity. I mean, that was it. And we were there stuck for the summer. Okay, so back to the bees. Um, where did I go here? Um, where am I here? Oh, fall down here. I got to tell you how much... How, how much the temperature is inside that. Uh, you love my stories, press to play. Oh, I got some stories. I mean, our kids used to sit there and just look at me and go, I'm going to ask Grandma about this. I don't believe this is true. I said, go ahead and ask her. And then ask her about her stories. I said, because I know her stories. <laughs> Thank you. They, they don't, they would just sit there. And I say, you know how I learned how to cook? in a kitchen well at grandma's house i said you know they'd go out there in the yard and get a chicken oh lord <laughs> oh lord i watch my granny get a chicken <laughs> and then i would come home and go shopping with my mother and see a chicken there and go, oh my god the trauma because I know how the chicken got there. My granny get that chicken. And come on out. She she would call me by my middle name. Get on over here, so and so, and help me cut this chicken up. Okay. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Mites? Yeah, mites. They're having a conversation about mites. Anyway, that's why I get so tickled with this home, the, the homesteaders. I love the homesteaders, but I just sit there and go, homesteading? Okay, you know. I mean, I started making my own clothes in seventh grade. I had to. I mean, 
I had to. I didn't have any other choice, you know. I was making my sister's clothes. I was making my clothes. I, at age 16, I was embroidering. I was crocheting. I was knitting. I was sewing. Um, in fact, no, it was eighth grade because when I graduated eighth grade, my parents promised to get me a sewing machine. If I had an 85 average, check that out, folks. I sure did. I got the 85 average. And I got a used sewing machine, but I got it. So, and then I made all, you know, it wasn't anything to write home about. And then I made everything on there. I had to. Okay, moving on. So, uh, if the hive is not ventilated in the winter, it gets too hot inside. All right. They'll die from that too. Because then they get the, the bees claim. <laughs> All right, enlightened. Yeah, they, um, you can't let the hive get wet. Okay, inside. And it does get wet in there. Don't ask me for what. Ask Bee Man. Now, Bee Man, why does the hive get wet and damp inside? I, you got to have it ventilated. We showed you last week how we have them ventilated. But. They have to get out to go to the bathroom. Now, what happens is a lot of times, you know, if, if the, you know, some people will say, well, why don't you put a blanket around the hive? Or why don't you put a solar heated something around the hive? Can't do that because then the bees think, oh, my goodness, it's summertime. Let's go. Let's fly. Let's take off. And they leave. And they get out there and they start flying around. And then all of a sudden, it's like 30 and they die. It doesn't take long for a little old itty bitty bee to freeze. You know, think about it. And then they, they drop. Um, so when the temperature is around 64 degrees Fahrenheit, um, honeybees begin to cluster together in the hive to keep the queen and themselves warm. At outside air temperatures at around 57 degrees Fahrenheit, the honeybees will cluster more closely together. See, as the temperature drops, they get closer. That's logic. Think. Hi, Canon, Canon's world. Good to see you. You know, you, you, you have, think you're together. Not, not us, not people. No bad thought. Think anybody, you're together. Not anybody. Think, I don't know, but just think. Uh, chickens. Yeah, chickens. You're together, okay? And it gets cold, all right? You're going to get closer together. Yeah. Uh, so, now, uh, and the exterior of that cluster will appear more compact. When the temperatures drop to 23 Fahrenheit or below, the bees on the inside of that cluster will begin vibrating their wing muscles to generate heat. Now that takes energy. Think about it. They're already, I mean, they got to start vibrating, not flapping, vibrating. Okay? They got to start vibrating their wing muscles to generate heat, which aids in bringing up the internal core temperature of the cluster. Everything goes to keeping that queen alive and saving whoever's on the inside. Inside that hive is not only the queen, but her five, I think it is, attendants who stay right around her. Okay? And then by fluttering their, or vibrating their wings, brings up that temperature. Uh, now along the outside of the cluster, when that starts on the inside, the outside, they just are still acting as a layer they are smart, Canaan's Kane, world. Uh, like dolphins, these are two species that are extraordinarily smart. Actually, all species of animals are very smart. They're adaptive. You know, you talk about Darwin's theory of uh, survival of the fittest. That is something not to be messed with for some odd reason. Anybody familiar with that? Survival of the fittest, that was Darwin. Now, he was talking about animals, not us. But, you know. Uh, so, bees make no attempt to maintain the temperature 
inside their hive, outside the winter cluster, which means what's happening outside that cluster, they could care less about. It could be freezing outside that cluster. They don't care. Now, the thing about it is, yeah, evolution. Yeah. Uh, well, not, I don't know about evolution. Survival of the fittest. And not, it is kind of evolution, but basically it means if you've got some species around, whoever is the best in shape, the most intellectually smart and can work out the same set of environmental problems survives. Now that's something to think about, folks. Think about that for a minute. You know, I'll get to that later. That is, think about that. That's how we got that. No, I can't talk about that on YouTube. But just think about that. Ponder on that for a minute. In any given situation, this is maybe one of the most, one of the most profound things I've ever said. Darwin's survival of the fittest may be interpreted. My mom's bees. Where is it? Oh, okay. May be interpreted in one way by what he is saying is there you know any type of animal or whatever in one particular environment which means everybody's on a level playing field nobody over here has anything different than nobody over here survival of the fittest whoever is the best in shape physically emotionally mentally psychologically, spiritually, shrewdest, cleverest, they survive. You take, now, that's how it is. And he, he said that that would assure that what did he say, B-Man? There you go, Canaan. Adapt or die. Oh, Joseph uh, Bowles. Sorry for the loss of your mother. That's right, Canaan's Can world. I'm fine, Coleman, babe. Good to see you. Adapt or die. Because he said that would assure that the best species or the most, the finest and the top, how can I put this? The top level of all species would endure. Check that out. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what the man said. I mean, there were some profound people back there. And those people are still being, um, they're... Not models, their beliefs and their um, whatever you want to call it, theories or whatever you want to call it, are still being being held to today. Got that right? Where's Tracy's world? My mom was the one who did. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Joseph Bowles. Oh. Wow. They went with her. How they where they go? But yeah, that's something to think of think of. That's like that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, that triangle. This is no conspiracy theory. This is uh Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that triangle that you what you know, what man's hierarchy of needs, what are the things they have to have going up that triangle? Where's a man on that triangle? You look over and see where's a man on that triangle. That'll tell you where they are and what they will claw to to get next. Got that right. Yeah. Now going on. Oh no. Oh, you're talking about oh no with uh telling you. And I learned that at a Baptist college. 
No, not Baptist College. Baptist Conference. Sure did. And I'm not even. Yeah, Coleman. Babe, I'm not even Baptist. But I, I like to go to those Baptist conferences. In fact, I went to a Southern Baptist Conference in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. One of the best things I ever attended. They know their scripture. <laughs> I do too, but I love those Baptist conferences. See, I'm the type of a person. Yes, self-actualization. You got that right. You don't actualize yourself. You know, yourself. Actualize it. Can you explain that? Because Candace, I don't think they know. I know what it means. It means make yourself what you're supposed to be. You. You yourself. Like I my. How's it go? I myself. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. One of the best ways I did that was. Um, and then I'm going back to the bees. See, this is going to be back to the bees and back here, back to the bees. Anybody figured that out yet? When I married Bee Man, you know, he had all these degrees. Whoopee! <laughs> I mean, I was proud of the man, but my name ain't on him. <laughs> I told him that my name's not on him. He's, I mean, you know, so I had to give me some. Who said that's right? Got that right, Coleman, but my name ain't on him. I got to actualize myself. Forget that. I have to, I, I have to, I have to, me, myself, and I, I got to take care of myself. Right? Because if something happens to him, what do I have? No, 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 no. I mean, I can take all I want, but, I mean, I shouldn't say that. Be man, I don't mean that, baby. <laughs> but, why should I take something that I, myself, can make? Right? Actualize myself. Shoot. Because I don't know my own self limit until I get out there and do it. Right? Hey, Canaan's world. <laughs> he knows that. I, he, know, he knows I cannot be satisfied. Well, no. I can't be satisfied just by taking all his stuff. I really can't. I tell you, I mean, and that's an odd thing for somebody to say. I can't. He knows that. I don't want all his stuff. I want my stuff. Meaning, I want my own stuff published. I want my own property. I want my own education. I want my own ideas into fruition. I am not going to be someone's this or someone's that. Why? I got a brain God gave me. That's self-actualization. Myself's going to be actualized. Heck with being someone's whatever. Shoot. It's a whole new level of thinking where you are happy with yourself and under. You got that right. Yeah. I mean, some people, I guess, want to be, they're happy if they're somebody else's. I love Baptist, Tracy. I've been to some great Baptist conferences. Love them. I'll tell you that right now. Somebody asked me, do I want to go to a Baptist conference? You got that right. You know who's one of my favorite? Um, and I have all of his tapes and tons of his CDs. Uh, I watch him on YouTube. We download him on our DVR on TV. And whenever I feel down is Pastor Bill Winston. That man can preach. I don't know if you like him. I don't know if you like him, Tracy, but that man can preach. But anyway, um, and my heart broke when Evie Hill left us. But what I'm saying is I'm all about the self-actualization, and that's what we push very heavy with our daughter. Yeah, you might, you might find somebody. So what? I mean, yeah, you, you're going to find somebody because she's gorgeous. Whoopee! You know? <laughs> You know, so what? You have your own. You take care of your own. You actualize yourself. You you do everything you can do to the most that you can do it. Nick, I'm proud of that girl. I'm telling you right now, you do everything you can do. 
you know, heck with, you know, just being somebody. I mean, it's it. Don't get me wrong. Mine is, my, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good to be, you know. Let's get to get. You know, what is that song? I can't sing it copyright, but yeah, it's good to be, whatever. But shoot, you know that stuff. And I, I, I don't know. That, okay, I'm going. Who started this? Uh, Cannon's world with that self actualization. No problem here with that. Uh, uh. My mother t warned me about that. She told me. She said, "You get out there." Cause my mother never learned how to drive. Never. And when I turned sixteen, it was pouring rain. The day I turned sixteen, it was pouring rain, and my mother never learned how to drive. And she got me up. Okay, go edit Canaan's World. That's something I don't do. She got me up. I'll never forget. She told me to get dressed. And she walked me all the way down with an umbrella. We had to share one. All the way down the motor vehicle. Because she had, uh, yeah, to take that test. She gave me five minutes to study. And I got, I, I passed. And she said, uh, you don't learn how to drive. She, with us girls, she said, don't just sit there. She said, no, because she did that. Move on. Honeybees do not hibernate. So, in the winter time, where am I here? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 So, just went by. They're not going to maintain the temperature. In the hive, they don't care about that. They only care about the temperature in the cluster. Okay. Warmer bees in the center of the cluster continually rotate out and change places with the colder bees along the outer edge of the cluster to allow the colder bees to warm up, which you would expect. Okay, that's right, Tracy. Me, myself, and I, because you gotta take care of yourself first. You gotta and 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 if you ever hook up with someone, he's 97. He came, uh, okay. You hook up with someone, fine. Fine, great. You know, hi, this is me, and uh, I, I do this, 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 and this. And I'm going to keep doing this, 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 and this. Now, how's that? I mean, we can work out a schedule or something, but... What are you doing? Oh, you're doing that, 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 and that. No problem. I'll help you all the way. And you're going to help me over here on this side. And, you know, two doing something is better than one doing something. Right, Tracy? Got that right. Shoot. I'm not going to dump everything I'm doing. Oh, no, 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 Not me. One source states that the temperature of the cluster is not closely correlated with the outside air temperature meaning the cluster temperature has nothing to do with the outside air temperature now the optimal meaning perfect temperature on the inside beehive cluster in a winter hive is 95 degrees Fahrenheit that may seem high, but they can do it. They can do it. Okay. That's the average temperature that people observe. Um, da 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 In a winter high. Okay. Uh, 48 degrees. Fahrenheit is the average temperature of the exterior exterior shell of the cluster. So that means on the outside of this cluster, some of those bees are living with 48 degrees. On the inside of that cluster, with all those wings vibrating and everything, they and, and the ones holding on and everything, they've got it to... Um, let me see what's going on over here. 95. Okay. Here we go. Let me get down here to... Here we go. Um, the highest temperature 
that has been recorded of a cluster was around a hundred. Maybe those were those African, no, it couldn't be the African bees because they don't live in the winter. Okay, Joseph Bowles, no uh, problem. The minimum temperature of the inside of a cluster that has been found has been found to be around 55 degrees Fahrenheit height, while the minimum temperature on the outside that they can tolerate okay has been observed to be around 46 now there are these expensive things you can get that you can see through the, the wood and uh, they will tell you the temperature of a hive of the cluster in there. We would take, we actually have a very good stethoscope, you know, what they use in a hospital. We would, we put that up there to, to see if we hear buzzing. Okay. No buzzing. We got a problem. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sometimes we hear no buzzing. They're alive. It, dep it depends. Um, one time last year, a couple of, even though we have bricks on top to hold them down, one time last year, a B-man went down there and the top had blown off. It was so cold. It was snowing and everything. And we thought, okay, that hive was shot. You know, all that was up there was the uh, reflectix and whatnot. And he put the top and everything back on and we went down a couple weeks later. They were roaring. So you, you just never know. Um, now, this is one I, I just actually learned about today. What? Okay. I'm hiding from guilty. What are you guilty of? Uh, okay, yes. Yeah, right, bee lady. What are you guilty of in life? Um, this one I actually didn't know about. B-Man knew about it. And I'm the one reading it. Um, they're called heater bees. Okay? These little bees, um, they can vibrate their tummies. <laughs> Tracy, don't say anything. <laughs> Reminds me of belly dancers. Ooh. They actually can, it says they can vibrate their abdomens. Allowing them to vigorously move their muscles to heat their bodies. Woo! This action can bring the bee's body temperatures to up about 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Enlightened, no comments. We'll talk about this in your life. <laughs> these are called, these things called, oh God. Uh, heater bees they actually can do this uh, so what they do is when the, the queen in there she's going she's laying eggs I mean they're, she's constantly laying eggs I mean it's not that she doesn't lay any eggs and bees are not hiding or not hiding I'm looking at them like bees are not hatching she's actually laying um, eggs in there okay what this these bees do is they go next to where there's an egg and when it gets really really cold and they go in an empty cell like one of those little empty cells and they go down in it and they they do their super duper dance and get that really really warm so that the little egg won't die hi r5 good to see you we're talking about heater bees okay we're getting ready to get off here, R5, before I get in trouble up here talking about these um, heater bees. Anyway, um, sometimes you will open a hive. Oh, wow, a QT. That sounds good. Sometimes you'll open a hive and you'll see... A swarm that's like two frames away from tons of honey and they're dead that's because they couldn't make it they died it's sad it's really sad uh, you see all kinds of things oh 
Oh, okay. Our fly everybody's editing. Um maybe I should edit. Um that's amazing. So there's so many things, you know, like the bet everybody up here in the north, we pack them up, we do the best we can do. You know, we put up windbreakers, wind guard, wind whatever, and we call it a day. Um that that that's all you can do and cut your losses in the spring. Um I don't know. It's part of beekeeping in the north. Somebody has to do it up here. Um in the south, you know, the trade in is um they're usually besieged with wax moths, although we've had some wax moths up here in the summer, but they're really heavy in the south, so I don't know. I am not LOL. I see knots fainting, Kate, gots, goats fainting. Oh, okay, Tracy. I was wondering, what's she talking about? Now, I'll close out on cleansing flights. Yeah, that's why you want the stronger, um, the stronger swarms, the big swarms I was talking about. You want the bigger clusters so they're able to go through the hive and get the food, get the food, get the food, and they go up and they're getting the food. Stillwater Nation, there's the bee lady. Oh, we're good, Stillwater. We're going up, they're getting the food, and they finally make it to the top where there's sugar and there's bee patties and all is well. And usually by the time we get there in March or so, we take a peek. There they are. They've made it. So, so and the, sometimes we open them up and it's like pfft, nothing. And, you know, they're not up there. Some of them are down below. It, it's just, it, it, you know, it is what it is. So we'll keep you posted. You know, we'll be going down. We'll be looking for evidence as they say of cleansing flights with which are the little dots on the snow we'll know they've made it out uh you can always tell if they get i think it's called dysentery i don't i don't know if i should use that word along the sides of the hive you'll see these brown streaks that's if they can't it's a sickness they get if they can't you know too much moisture in the hive and they can't get out for cleansing flights and stuff i like in a tweet for the Sweet honeybees, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Still. Oh, I can imagine what you have over there. I can only imagine Stillwater Nation. I don't know how he handles things over there. I really don't. Um. So, I think that's about it. Stillwater, can you thumbs up if you're going live? Because I got to get over there. You. You all won't. Y'all ever been over to Stillwater? I mean, everything's all over the place. I don't know how the man does it. it yes, R5. I, I, we went between this and Maslow's theory and um, oh, no, Darwin's theory and how poor I was growing up and I, oh, it was everything. Pajama, oh, that's okay. Pajama bottom mama. Folks, join that channel. And go, oh, okay, Stillwater, go to one of her live streams in the morning. And I promise you, I promise you, you will go back. I promise you. That woman has the energy of a saint. I, 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 not that we all don't, but I don't know. I, I'm going to even highlight her channel on my uh in my description her channel is the kind of place you go to and it's like oh you know not that we're all like r5 you got the pony <laughs> so but pajama bottom mama she's i don't know what else to say about her i really don't thank you some i mean she's 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 like I'm trying to think of somebody to compare her to. Um, one, uh, like Olivia Walton, maybe? Really? She's just... I don't know how to explain it. 
So anyway, I'm going to end this because I've taken you all through so much. <laughs> my poverty, my grandparents, um, everything else. And, you know, the bees. The, any questions? You know. Oh, and Pajama Bottom Mama, I got some advice for your son. It'll be easier for you. AQ2, AQ2, AQT. Can you join Pajama Bottom Mama? I, I, I'm telling you, you won't regret. For your son and his driving test, I'm going to tell you what he should do. Wow. When he starts driving, before he pulls out, <laughs> he's got to go to the other extreme. Tell him to put his signal on, do the hand sig put his signal on, stick his hand out the window, give that directional, look in the rearview mirror, look in the window outside, put his head out there and look. Well, no, that's illegal. Is that illegal, anybody? Food for us, hi. No, it's not. Do, do all of it and then look again and then take off and then go slow. If the speed limit says 35, go 30. <laughs> Is that against the law? I'm telling you. And go slow. And then when he gets to a stop, I'm telling you how to do it because I know people that have done this. Get to a stop sign, stop dead, stop. Look right, look left. Look behind in the rear view mirror and then go. Okay? And then go. And if he says, I want you to stop at the stop sign and go right. Stop at the stop sign. Put on the signal. Look right. Look left. Put it. Use those hands. You know, up. Y'all can't see me. Up, down. I forgot them now. Use. Get the window down. I don't care if it's five below. Get the window open. Use those hand signals with the da 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 da, da Because you have to show. You still there? In my 80s. No pajama bottom. When he takes that test and he tells him to make a turn, that window has to be down. Because one plus will be he puts that window down and he shows, he knows these hand signals, up, down, I don't know what they are, I forgot, but I knew them. And he, and he puts on the signal and he uses that also. And then he looks in the rear view mirror and then he makes the turn, okay? And then what else does he do? Uh, he goes slow and he makes sure nobody's coming. And what was the other thing you said? If it says 20, 25, he goes 20. The only thing is, I was no good at <coughs> parallel parking. And I'm going to flunk you on parking. Okay? And I'm going to flunk you on parking. Yes, food force permaculture. Salute. Okay, I got to watch those salutes. Salute this way, the flag. Yes. Um, but yeah, if it says... 15 miles per hour, he goes 10. But when they ask him to use those, uh, now you will be driving in his 80s when they say make a right, window down, stick his hand out that window, put on the turn signal, okay? Put on that turn signal, but put that window down and use this also. The hand, What is the hand signal? I don't know what it is. Learn that and do that at the same time. And then look out the rear view. Is it? I find out if it's illegal. Where are you, Tracy? And see if it's illegal to put turn around and look out the window. It might be. I don't know, but you better Google that one in New York. But and look up there. But use the hand signals because what they're looking for is. Do you know those hand signals? They're in the book. Aren't they in the book, guys? Yeah, because what if the hand, what they're thinking? What if those go out? I'm telling you. And I, I passed my test, and I drive with two feet. <laughs> they didn't care, and I had to sit on a pillow because I'm short. You can see, I'm short. And my sister, she passed, and she drives barefoot. <laughs> passed her, but you, you got to go slow, take a right, whoop, window down, 
Hand out. Signal on. Use the sick hand. That will impress them. And then um, Tracy instant message me or message me private on uh, Twitter. Yeah, that'll work. But he has to do, pull out all the stops. He's got to prove he knows those hand signals. Got to stop dead on those stop signs. Dead. No stop and go. Dead stop. Like, dead. And then look left, look right, look in that rear view mirror. And then, even if it's straight, then go. Because somebody can be coming from behind fast and you're you know, going to pass you. Yeah, you got to do all that stuff. That's right. That's right. You got to play like you're 97 years old out there and you don't want anybody taking your license. <laughs> I'm telling you. Right. And then he'll pass. Right, folks? But those hand things, I think they'll get you over. I really do. Those fainting. Okay, Tracy's world. And he'll, he'll be okay. How soon can he take it again? What else can he do? I don't know what else they ask you, but they're not going to fail him on parking. But if he's, you know, right now, even insurance, I mean, this is something we found out with both of our sons. If you're under 25, they want to put you in that risk pool because single men under age, is it 25 B man? My husband's dusters. I think it's 25. They want to put you in, you're a high risk. And our boys were working part time when they were in college. They had to, they had to ante up. Any up the money. I mean, you know. Yeah, you gotta it's tell him to go for tell him he's got to be on the other side. He can't, he has to be very slow. He he doesn't have he has to show that he's slow. You know, like he's in the slow lane. Like he's under he's I think even if he's not under 25, he's he's a risk because he's a single male. Okay. Mississippi. Oh, that's okay, Tracy's world. Just private. Bees don't make milk. Huh? He wants milk from our bees? Okay, still water nation. But um, yeah, if you if you ever need to see see a wild check, go over to Still Water Nation uh, pajama bottom mama. But yeah, he needs to be extremely conservative because well, you probably already know with the with the risk pool. And, and how they view a uh, young man in New York State as far any state, but especially in New York State, as far as young men. We, we've had to go through that. Boy, we put them on our insurance. This is the only way you can do it, too. You know, even when they had car, you know, we got the car as well, you know, for them to drive back and forth to school with, or they used our car. Holy mama, you know. You know, he's got to use those hand signals. Stick right out the window, you know, and at the same time. Yes, they do. So you want him to look. And then if he goes, I believe, which you probably already know, um, if he goes to that driver's school, I believe he can get a percentage off on his insurance. So I think he said he went to driver's school so he can get a discount on his insurance. I've been in that driver's school a couple of times. One for driving without a seatbelt when I was eight months pregnant. The guy walked <laughs> me over and said, Hi, lost girl. Good to see you. said, You don't have a seatbelt on. I said, I can't. It won't fit. Sorry, ma'am, but you have to put it on. I said, Well, then you try it. <laughs> said, oh, man, please, I can't do that. You're the one giving me a ticket. I don't, just, you know, yeah, hi, Lotz girl. Wasn't I ending this like 10 minutes ago? So anyway, go on to uh, Pajama Bomba, blah, 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 Pajama Bottom. Yes, I was eight months pregnant, Lotz girl. No way was that seatbelt going over my stomach. No way. It, it wasn't going to happen. And he's saying, well, ma'am, you have to make it fit. How? I said, well, then you go ahead. Ma'am, I can't do that. 
you know, so I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm supposed to be ending this. I know B-Man's down there waiting, waiting. I'm coming, B-Man. All right. This has been fun. I'm going to end this, but it's been fun. Yeah, this finger. I have my OBS in the wrong direction. So, everybody that came, thank you. And I'm going to stop now, but uh, take care. I hope that puts a little light on the beekeeping subject. YouTube pajama, bottom mama. I, I, I miss your live stream, but <laughs> I have to set an alarm. I'm going to really... I set all these alarms and is you know I've got myself so trained I wake up shut this one off shut that one off and then I just nothing happens but I have to get back over there because she knows her stuff on saving money and stuff and I really you know as the holidays come so thank you everybody take care see everybody later bye ending yay